Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the next stage. I hope you all are having a great night tonight. I am going to unspotlight myself because I am not really the star of the show. Many of you have been here before. Some of you are new. Some of you are watching later on YouTube, so you're not even actually here yet. Hello, future. My name is Rebecca Wallace. I am the marketing director at City Lights Theater Company in downtown San Jose. I am also the host of this weekly Next Stage program. Before we get started, I think we should all take a moment and appreciate the beauty that is the commercial jingle. We all love the jingle or we hate the jingle. We have ones we hate, we have ones we love. I started thinking about it because I grew up in the Bay Area and raise your hand if you've heard this one. Dublin, Berkeley, San Lorenzo, Cupertino, San Jose. <laughs> yep, was an old jingle for a camera store. Totally remember that one. <laughs> I was thinking, I've been to Bruner's and now I've seen everything. Yep, Justin's rocking out. Throughout the program, if you remember a jingle that you love growing up or you love it now or you hate it or you love it or if it's 1-800-CARS-FOR-KIDS, don't mention that one because it's awful. <laughs> Feel free to go ahead and type it into the chat and uh, we'll just share them. Oh, Anne has 1 800 58 Empire. I don't know that one. 800 500 Empire. That's a good one. Today. Nice. Anne's conducting it. One. You know, this That's is embarrassing. I don't know that one. Great My husband jingle. Was singing a little bit. And yeah. he had one. <laughs> Wait, do you want to sing, contribute your favorite? Uh, Take your clothes to Highland Cleaners. Call for a pickup if that's what you need. Oh, I don't know that yes. one. Wow. Highland Cleaners, Monterey it's a County. Step dancing. Highland <laughs> Cleaners. It sounds all Scottish and kilty. And it needs a bad fight. <laughs> He's shy. He's not a Best unfair. place to take your kilt. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> So we are just going to celebrate that beautiful art form tonight. We have Justin and John with us tonight. Justin Keys, Cheers. John, John, I've never said your name out loud, so I'm going to just butcher it. John Campione. Nailed it. Yes. College Italian class. That's they great. are That's actors. They are musicians. They are songwriters. They are podcasters. Wow. They're just kind of amazing. And they're super, super, super entertaining. Uh, last year, last spring during the pandemic, they started a podcasting venture called Pod Help the Outcasts, and it is all about supporting the small business. And how they've been doing that is writing a commercial jingle for these different small businesses, including City Lights. You'll see ours later. And they're all about saving small businesses one jingle at a time. We are delighted to have them both here with us tonight. They're going to talk about theater and podcasting and songwriting and all the good things. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thank this you for is having surreal. Us. Thank you so <laughs> much for having us. John, I was thinking, so this is literally too. I was, maybe we talked about this. This idea was born exactly a year ago to, the, for, to my birthday, which is April 10th. John, this is April 15th. This is a year. John called me on Zoom. 300, had a, 370 days later. That's right. John called me on Zoom. My mom had a Zoom birthday party. And my mom does Zoom birthday parties in like appointments. So you have an appointment time. So you come in and you have like a window. So you have like a 35 minute window where you can appear or not. And you're not in the next window. John came in the window by himself and he was in a suit. Well, you were in a suit on top at least. Like you were definitely business yeah. on top. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was the, it was Zoom times completely. Like I was in literally in boxers and then I had, I think I had a bow tie and a jacket. And a shirt he had a bow tie and a jacket on his piano, but probably like no pants on. Cause it was like the beginning of Zoom and you still didn't put on full clothes for Zoom. You're like, what am I, you know, I'm, I don't have to be fully dressed. So he sang happy birthday to me on the piano. And I was like, hey, we should start. A, it was something like we started talking and we were like, we should start a jingle podcast. And then we did. Great story. It was, as no, we, random, we it was as random as that sounds. I love that. Yeah. We have, your mom, then, we have Claire. We have your mom and her, your birthday Zoom to thank for the podcast starting. But then we were like, okay, wait a minute. We went like this, kind of. Then we started to like think about it. And we were like, wait, does anyone have, do people have jingle podcasts? And then we were like, no. And then we kind of, I think, we're like, so what jingles? And then between us, we had like jingles spilling out. 
And then we were horrified about the pandemic shutting down small businesses. I happened to be back at home in California and like things were closed and it was very bizarre. Uh, and I felt nostalgically connected to like certain things in my neighborhood and my mom's neighborhood. She lives in Japan town that just were not open. So yeah, it was super bizarre to me to think of a world where like places like Roy station, which is our favorite, our first rather favorite. We have no favorites, but that was our first, uh, and it was bizarre to just think that maybe if this went on long enough, like they wouldn't be there anymore. Yeah. So that sort of creeped us out and inspired us to um, take action. Right, Johnny? Am I close? Yeah. You're, I mean, you're nailing it. Yeah. It, it, we, we really wanted to just, I think we just wanted to create something. And, and, and that was the impetus was the, the fear. All of the news articles, if you'll recall at the time were about, you know, one, I think one third of restaurants and small restaurants in New York mm. are not going to survive, for example, you know, mm -hmm. like people were, there was a lot of journalistic um, output about this topic. And, and like, like Justin said, he was really concerned about uh, Roy Station in particular. And, and, and we had just, I had just, you know, played and sang on the piano or whatever, and we were just tossing ideas around. And then it um, sort of, sort of grew from there. And it was kind of like, all right, other people have, podcast of like I know people who have done this like like it's possible people can podcast normal people podcast it's not just mm -hmm. PC or whatever so like how do we do that and we just kind of slowly figured it out and I remember John was like I remember we just kind of also remember we went through that beginning period of being like um before we actually started started and we just were like okay we're just gonna because you know the hardest thing is starting anything Right. Oh, you know, yeah. we just were like, we're going to oh, start. Yeah. So then I was like, well, what if we, and then John made this crazy analogy, which I'll never forget. He told me there were like a bazillion, a ton of, a ton of people were starting podcasts. He was like, so if we start a podcast, I don't remember the number, but he's like, if we start a podcast and we even just go for this long, we will be like 70% ahead of the people who are starting pandemic podcasts. We just have to get to like this many episodes and like stay with it for this long. And then it ended up being like a year later, we're still here starting season two. Um, and that's really cool. Give me one second. I have to shut. I have to shut my window. Someone's screaming outside. Hold on. <laughs> well, an interesting, an interesting fact along that that front. While Justin rudely leaves me alone, is yeah, that so? Podcasting as a business, as a genre, as a as a you know, call it what you want, just surpassed two million podcasts. But I heard a stat recently, uh, a couple of days ago. There was another study. Eight percent. Only 8% of those 2 million podcasts have both 10 shows or more and have released an episode in the last 90 days. So actually, it was something like this, you told me. You see, these are the stats he has. You see, he has the stat ready. I just remember he said something about if there are this many, then we're this many. We have to be on the side of a certain that many. And that's what I thought. Continue, John. It's Sorry. a long haul. That's it. No, that's the point. It's a long haul. You just, uh, you just kind of get in it and keep doing it. And I'm very, very glad that Justin has had the, the energy and the desire to like keep doing it basically just because we, we, we together are greater than the sum of our parts. Like by myself, I never would have kept doing this. And I think by himself, I, I probably speak for both of us, like without the other, we never would have been able to continue doing this. We bring things to the, to the product that the, that the other one, either either doesn't or just really doesn't want to you know it's uh it, it was very very fortunate that we that we teamed up when we did and in the way that we did because um you know you you don't come along these collaborations all the time you know working in theater you're constantly collaborating with people and so often it's it makes you want to pull your hair out as much as it is is um re rewarding and, and wonderful and all the things that we love about theater so like when you come up upon a partner like like I found in Justin, you know, it's 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 something you kind of want to hang on to and, and keep keep doing, finding things to work together on, you know. I agree. So I'm gonna just say one more thing. We're gonna promise we're gonna actually do the episode, Rebecca, at some point. Um, <laughs> it is the I, I agree with I know I agree with John. And I remember when I first met John, we did a show together. We're gonna we're go this is part of the episode. This is good. See, that was my we question. Met, I was gonna say, tell me about how you met. Cause I know. Okay, perfect. Story. Yes. So one. we, we're one of those, God, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of actors now have met during a production of Les Mis, but we met during a production of Les Mis. Uh, we were Marius and Angel Ross. Not just, not just any production of Les Mis. Not just 
That's right. We met in Liesl Tommy's Dallas Theater Center production of Les Mis, which was modern dress, and we had handguns, and we were shooting each other. Post-apocalyptic and assault Post-apocalyptic, yeah. Nine millimeter handguns, yeah. And I just remember thinking, we didn't know each other. You were still in Dallas at the time permanently. And I just remember thinking, God, this is the type of guy, I wish I could work with this guy on everything forever for the rest of my life. But it's like, you meet those collaborators and you're like, oh, maybe something else will come along. And then after that, you actually moved to New York. Mm-hmm. And we stayed I'm in touch. Dallas, we hung so I was a yeah. local. I was a local hire for that production in Dallas. That was the second to last production I did in Dallas. Actually, I was already planning to move and and working with like people like Justin and some of the other New York actors that had come in were you know were, were helpful like brains to pick as it were and and resources to to move into the city. But Justin, continue. No, no, no. I was just saying. So I remember saying to myself, God, this is a kind of. I wish I could work with this dude forever on everything. But you're an actor and you're in New York and you're going here and there and you're, you know, you're uh, diligently. <laughs> yeah. How many actors have met in them is I want to know that everyone's going to be like me. Um, so I just remember feeling that. And then it came to fruition. It was weird. It just was like serendipitously last year. I was like, we need to do something. And I think the key to happiness, you know, and finding happiness in life is like everyone's like, oh, if you do what you love, it'll come to you. Yes, that's a big part of it. But a big part of it is doing what you love with someone you love doing it with, because you can be doing what you love. And the only problem is like everybody are doing it with you can't stand. But if you can find something you love and actually making it with someone you love and like respect and adore and who compliments you, like that's kind of the fountain of eternal youth right there, in my opinion. So we're the community really happy. Is key. Yeah, 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 totally. Totally. So, yes. Oh, isn't that sweet? And you have this great chemistry and it shows up in the videos for your jingles too, which leads me to the <laughs> first video that I want to show. Oh boy. So I've been kind of billing you guys as New York actors, but of course, Justin is from San Jose. John is from Dallas, yeah. Justin grew up in San Jose. And mm-hmm. I know you're in Berkeley right now, Justin. Mm-hmm. One of the things that really gave your venture a boost was a grant from the Lee Weimers Emerging Artists uh, Award right here in San Jose, which is a yes. program of the Rotary Club of San Jose, which supports up and coming mm-hmm. artists. It's a wonderful program. It's named after the late Mercury News columnist Lee Weimers, who was all about lifting up art in the Bay Area. And you came from you came from arts journalism, right? I too. did. I was, yep, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Arts journalist before I started working. Yeah. I, I, I was the arts editor at the Palo Alto Weekly and mm-hmm. um, but always loved theater. And when this job came mm-hmm. off, it was just natural. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa's but I'm friend. saying you under, I, I'm saying that because, you know, Lee Weimers, you guys had a similar connection and that it was, you know, a lot of, yeah, yeah, I totally. never knew him, but I read his column and mm-hmm. his, mm. um, his program has done so much good and continues to do so much good. So after you guys won this grant, you made the great jingle and jingle video for the Lee Weimers reports that I'm going to show right now. And you're going to love it. And Lisa, you're not allowed to cry. I also have to say too, I want to say Amy, Amy D has sung on this program. She was also a recipient. Um, That's right. Tassi Alex Lopato. Arango. Yeah. Uh, Tassi Labastro, Alex Arango was a recipient and Lydia Ray Black, who's a stunning visual artist. We're all other recipients that year, the same year. They're all so talented. So uh, yeah, Alex Arango, yeah. Alex Arango, Lydia Ray Black, Amy D, Tassi and um, Lydia Ray Black. Shout outs. Anyway, sorry. That's great. And Alex Arango, I've been talking to you and he's going to be on the show next month. Good. He's so it. gifted. He's oh yeah, you're lucky. Musician from Columbia. In, he's really wonderful. You're in for a treat. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. On no, to our all right. The Lee Weimers yeah. Awards. We've had many people from the Lee Weimers Awards be on the show and it's awesome. But uh, okay, check out this video. John, wow. can you come in here for a second, please? Yeah. <clears throat> what? I have some good news. What's that? So it entered us in this competition and we won a grant. What? Who would give us a grant? I'm glad you asked. There's this team who loves new artists. They're a bunch of good timers. They give away this grant in honor of Lee Weimers. Now Lee was quite the guy, though he's not around today. He believed in lifting up the artists here in San Jose. His passing left us solemn. He used to write a column. 
published in the Mercury News. He was hip, he was cool, he ripped the small timers. He was nitty, he was gritty. His name was Lee Wymers, though he passed in 2012. He still came in the way, still lifting up the up and comers right here in the bay. So you see, Johnny, dreams do come true. Yeah. I'm confused. Well, it's just, I don't understand how this grant came to be. So then this guy named Steve. Oh, you mean Steve Borkenhagen? Yeah, I hear that guy can captivate a room like Ronald Reagan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But so is Lee's wife, Jerry. They get this great idea for a grant that's legendary. And right here in our city, they form this great committee that funds emerging artists like us. They're hip, they're hot. They rep the small timers. They're a nitty gritty committee. They call them Lee Wymers. They've got actors, singers, dancers, painters, sculptors, harpists, rhymers. They've dropped near a hundred grand in the name of Lee Wymers. So that is how we want it. Wait, Don't make me repeat it. We're humble to be honored. There is nothing that can beat it. So place us on the roster of the greats who came before us. We are simple jingle writers, but we're glad that you adore us for helping artists blossom. SJ Rotary is awesome. We'll honor you and me as we grow. Cause now we're hip, we're cool, we're kind of big timers. All because of your committee in the name of Lee Wymers. And though we never met, and he's still paving the way He's still lifting up the up-and-comers Right here in the bay Oh, <laughs> that's so good! Thank and you. I haven't really seen that. Sweet. I haven't seen that in a minute. That's fun. I've, it's been a while since last year. It, it's beautiful the way your voice is blend. Look at the applause. I see applause. I mean, <laughs> I, I I'm biased, but I gotta say, like, I can tell people with a the theater background because they got the voices, right? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, man. That's so sweet. It's Thank beautiful. You. Now, at the risk of sounding like I'm quoting from Merrily We Roll Along, which generally comes first? The lyrics or the Oh lyrics? yeah. <laughs> um I know, I go, but it, 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 it. Yeah, goes, thank you. <laughs> I know, right? Um, well, how do you we, do it, Justin? You write most of our stuff. I just try to think of an annoying, Lee Weimer's The Chords came first. Remember, John, we were going back and forth on the, uh, do, 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 do. I just kept hearing a really annoying superhero chord progression, but I was like, he was kind of a superhero. He was a, then I went with like a superhero theme. Do, 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 Like, I just kept hearing superhero comic book music. And I was like, that's fitting, because it's Lee Weimers. And he, like, has lifted up so many people and championed them. And now he's, like, flying in with a cape and rescuing artists during the pandemic. So that's how the theme came first. And then I just, I'm trying to think of what came first. Da, 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 because Lisa was like helping, I mean, helping organize it. And Lisa's so fantastic because she's like really great at like talking to the Rotary, talking to the artist because she speaks artist fluently, more than fluently. So I, we sent the first lyric and we were like, there's this team of new artists. There are a bunch of, I think we said old timers, but I meant <laughs> like, yeah. I met like classic folks, you know, like old timers, like OGs. It's, it's like, she it's was like, like what Justin and I aspire to be. Yeah, we were like old timers, you know, like cool with their cocktails. And she was like, I don't think you're going to want to call the Rotary old timers. That can... <laughs> so we were like, all right. Then we just kind of, I don't know. We just, we got a, we got a hook and then we just kind of kept going. And then we just really like, I don't know, the comic book idea though, I thought was like, you know, kind of American hero type of theme, if that's so nerdy, right? 
You, you know what I was just blown away. <gasps> Lisa! Hi. Lisa. Hi. Hi. I'm here. Hi. Did you Hi. not? Know, did you not know I was here while you were talking about me? I didn't because I'm on an iPhone, so I can only see us talking. Oh, you're so funny. Hi, Lisa. But I can't believe you. Like you're so cute. You were saying nice things, and I was right here, like going, "Yeah." Oh no! Now you're talking. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Talk. It's so good to see uh, you. I know that old timer thing was so funny because the truth is, I mean, I know this is being recorded, so I really shouldn't say this, but a lot of that is true. <laughs> Sure. No, it's yeah. rotary. But I just yeah. thought, like, as a generalization, it might not be great. We'll but... take that part out, Lisa, for but... their <laughs> <laughs> What I thought was so beautiful was that um you you didn't know him personally, and I did. And I was amazed. Uh, yeah. I was amazed at how beautifully you captured like the the spirit of uh, Lee was sort of a a, a, a superhero of sorts. I'm for, so glad you feel that way. Thank and you. And I just thought, how did you do that? Because I knew him and I just thought, mm -hmm. that was, but then, but then remember the other little funny snafu? Do you remember the other one? Oh I mean, yeah, no, we talked about this before. We're glad you're bringing it up because we want to uh, spin. So I think we were, John, remember before we wrote the Borkenhagen lyric, we kept being like, we had a weird thing first. We, for, we first of all, which will, this is neither here nor there. We were trying to rhyme Borkenhagen with bacon, which was bad. That didn't make it in. But John and I had a picture. We made our first video and we put, I think, Sal Pizarro yeah. as Steve Borkenhagen. Right. So we sent, we submit the video and Lisa's like, ah. Uh. So, and like I said, she speaks artists so well. She's not like, you know, she was like, um, so guys, I, and I don't know how you would know this. There's no way you would have known. Um, that's not Steve Borgenhagen. We were like, oh, <laughs> it's not? <laughs> we had no idea. It was South it was Zara. We, yeah. I know. It's really nice to have oh, a see, go. And just put in the project. chat that you sounded just like me because yeah, I did. am. I'm so like patient and loving. I'm like, don't worry, because how would you know? But no, she, yes, exactly. Yeah, how would you have known? There's no way you would have known. And we were like, oh, and John, I was like, oh, we put the wrong guy in for the, we got to fix that. Thanks. God. But I think I, Sal Pizarro I, would get a kick out of that. Yes, you guys nailed it so much though. I mean, Thank you. I you know, I obviously I sit on that committee and and I and Steve is a dear friend and so is Sal and I knew Lee and and you know, the committee was just falling all over themselves with what you did. I mean, I was the one that said, "Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we commission them to write a jingle?" So, so cool. You know, and and, and they were like, what, really? And I said, yeah, and, and we'll pay them extra. And um, I'll, I'll help, you know, I'll facilitate. And, and um, but they, I mean, we just had a meeting talking about how can we put, get it on the website and push it out because we're opening applications again. Oh yeah, because yeah, yes. yeah, it's and another then, round, totally. So totally. we're just talking about the jingle, and I just want you to know how how grateful everybody is, and that how how still um, blown away everybody is by by what you created and by both Thank of your you. talent, and you know it's meaningful, um, and it makes a difference. So really, it was wonderful. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so we much. Yeah. And I'm Thank sure you. Lee's wife loved it too. Did you get to uh -huh. meet Jerry Weimer? She's that, Yeah, to... that was really, um, yeah, we heard from her and I believe we heard from Lee's daughter as well. Cause we, uh, is it Kristen, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's because we, um, we just really, and John, this is all John because John is really responsible for, uh, he's really responsible for the visual and the audio. So we really wanted to make sure we had things, you know, that were, um, like I said, because we didn't know him personally, right? So we wanted to make sure that what we did have in there, we wanted photographs that uh, Jerry and Kristen felt connected to, but also felt comfortable sort of releasing in this kind of venue because, you know, that's their father and, and late husband. So you don't want to, you know, there's, there's some distance you maybe want to keep or some things you want to keep private, but they were so wonderful and so complimentary in reaching out to us. But yeah, we were in touch with them and we were just happy that we captured him in some way. And that people, you know, I think I remember on the day it kind of was going by so fast for people that they were kind of letting it wash over them, but they were really like, they were really responding to it. And that's why I think it was really, but John is really responsible for sort of making, you know, that 
making it sort of leap because also listen we're we're theater people you know so we're not even used to this medium of creating we're good at creating live things you know but it's john is responsible for taking what we make in a room and actually making it palatable and applicable to people on this little frame or reaching them or you know so the whole rotary what ended up really touching everybody john is totally responsible for for making that happen so and it's i mean it's completely a team effort though i mean we the the the, I think the partnership works so well because we we constantly are bouncing things back and forth off each other, like the uh, the flower all over me bit. Justin, you know. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the flower. I didn't know. I didn't know if he was going to bring that up. Justin John was completely came opposed to it. I I was able to get just enough of it, and I was like, I don't know how this idea came about. But it's like, what if we bake the cake? We need like another storyline in the video, as if <laughs> I remember. Like we need if a I whole. May. Please. I remember John said he wanted to come in when I was reading about the phone or reading about the Weimers. And he said he wanted to just be doing something completely other than what was happening. Another storyline. Okay. We start, he comes in, he's covered in flour. He goes, I have an idea. He comes in, he's not only covered in flour, he's in the shower throwing flour all over himself. Remember you're throwing flour all over yourself. He has flour all over him. And mm -hmm. so I was like, just like theater, right? I was like, well, I was like, the fucking flower. Excuse my language. Oh my God, I just swore. I'm so sorry. It's like the flower. <laughs> we'll take it out. He first. goes, he goes, take it out. So he goes, the flower. And then I go, like a true theater actor, I go, well, listen, if we're putting a bit in, we're putting a bit all the way in. We're baking a cake. Right. I go, you had better bake that cake. And it better say something that has to do with the video. We're going to have a full cake. John was up all night. He baked a cake. It was delicious. And then it was full circle. It was like, we baked a cake to thank them. It was great. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. See, teamwork. Yeah, I just, I teamwork. wanted, I had an idea and it was a cheap bit and it went away too soon. And Justin was right. He was like, if you're going to show up with flour, you can't just leave the flour, you know, Chekhov's gun. You, you can't just leave the that's flour there. Thinking. If the gun comes in, it's got to go off by the end of the scene. Right, it's right. got to go off. That that That's flower right. had to become a cake, so I had to borrow a pan from a friend. And I'm not a I'm not a baker. I had to find, find Pyrex somewhere and make a cake and buy stuff to to write on it. And it was it was fun. It was the most delicious cake I've ever had. It was very very delicious. I very it was ask. not not from scratch. It was some Betty Crocker or whatever. Well, it's it's very well done, and we do have a professional props designer here on the Zoom, Miranda Williams. Oh. Miranda, do you think that the cake satisfied? Do you think they did a good job? Was it a good? I think job? it looked really good. I have to say, it looked very delicious. I'm a big fan of chocolate cake, but that looked yes. and that looked really good. Yeah, you got Thank the you, props Miranda. designer seal of approval right there, and I like the, the logo on it too. I thought that was a nice touch. I didn't know what the writing was going to be, but I did like that. Yeah. Yes, there it is. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> oh, there you go. A professional's complimenting your props. So I really appreciate that. Relief. Thank you so much. Wow, that is a major sigh of relief. Well done. <laughs> major sigh of relief. So now, and yes, we can oh, get ahead. you those stickers. And I see that uh, we can get you some stickers for sure. Oh my God. We, yeah. And just ask in the chat can we buy those stickers? Yes, yes, yes. We all yes, want stickers. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we all want to bake cakes and put stickers on them. So this award really kind of buoyed, I never know how to say that word out loud, kind of buoyed you up. And, and you've been continuing buoyed. writing jingles buoyed. for lots of different businesses in the Bay Area, in New York and other places. I'm gonna play mm -hmm. one, one of your San Jose jingles. And then I wanna talk about the different small businesses you've been working with. So this is Abby's Upholstery. And you wanna give me a little intro, how this business is, how you found them? My mom, yeah, of Justin. course, my mom. <laughs> Your mom. My mom tells me, yeah, my mom knows, my mom will be like, Abby's. I'm like, what, who? Abby's upholstery. She, uh, my mom had been working with her on something. She'd be working for something for my mom. And then sure enough, it came back. It was absolutely beyond beautifully done. And uh, it was cool to meet a woman who was, uh, no, it was, it was just cool to meet a, it was cool to meet someone in that space who was like very, um, who was working with her hands, but was like repurposing. My mom's really into, and a lot of people are, are into taking something that needs to be redone and doing, you know, that creative of like repurposing, using your hands, working with your hands. And I'm not saying, I'm not making the assumption that like, that's not a uh, craft, that's not like a feminine craft. I'm just saying it was really cool to it was really cool to see what she did for my mom because my mom is also uh, a woman who's really into like repurposing and like taking old things and making them new. So 
my mom got this chair back and I was like, wow. My mom was like, you need to go meet her or do something for her. And uh, she was so supportive. We had a call with her and she was like, whatever you guys need, I'm so thrilled. And like, we just, I mean, we just, it was one of those, it was just one of those things where like meeting her and talking with her, we were so happy to be doing it. She was so happy to have us do it. And we just, she's so awesome. And she's just so freaking talented is the main thing. When you meet someone who's that talented at what they do, you're just like, ah. She should have her own HGTV show if that's what she wants. She should have her own. She really should. Yeah, she's just beyond. So that's sort of how that happened. The work is impeccable. And... The... No, go ahead. The work is impeccable. Yeah, no, I don't know if I had another statement beyond that. Like, her, her, her work is just fantastic. She's just like, um, I don't know. It, it, it really felt like the kind of in small, local, community impact driven business she at the time i'm not sure where this has gone but at the time she was telling us she was working on a on a a, a, a buy use like fix up and repurpose like nice pieces of furniture you know a, oh, a, yeah. like a wood wood table and four chairs but at a an affordable level for yes. you know people that, that want to get good furniture in their house but like don't have the experience buying it or don't have the the in, the annual income to really be able to think about you know, quality pieces of furniture. I know that life very well. Being like, oh, there's a chair on the sidewalk. Quick, get that before somebody else does, you know? like, <laughs> But to actually make these kinds of nice things affordable to people, I just, I, I think her, her her vision, and she's a, a single mom of two. She's just really, really a great, um, a great person that, that, to, to, to feature in the kind of, the kind of businesses that we are, are, are looking for. Love it. And uh, I have to say too, this tune is John's 100%. You wrote this tune. And we'll tell the story after we watch it about this, the origin of the tune. But you wrote this tune. This is John's. This is an amazing. This is John's. It's all John. Because Justin writes about, to date, about 90% of our jingles. I do more of the post-production stuff. The the videos, the the editing, certainly like the, the podcast editing and, and posting and stuff. And he does more of the finding of the, the businesses and the the writing and, and sculpting of a, a tagline you know we create like together or, or you know finished products together but he, he's the one that really like kind of gets a tag or gets a hook or you know sort of puts us in the world like musically so thanks Justin. but that is not to say my point is that is not to say that john cannot write a mean jangle as you're about to hear <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's hear it yeah that's one of the reasons i chose this one because i i liked the jingle here we go so cute Bro, I really hate this couch. Yeah. Ew. No, bro. It's so annoying. Like, when there used to be sports, I kept looking down and thinking, damn, this piping is just the entirely wrong style for this living space. You know, bro? Bro, it's like you're reading my mind. This texture is just, like, off, bro. Fabrically speaking, we should toss it. Wait, hang on, bro. Abby's? Abby's. There's this awesome mom I know, based in Northern California. She'll Ew. take the couch away, and then with no delay, reupholster it right for you. Get a fully custom <laughs> job. Oh, get down. That piece from grandma. Clean and top stitch seams will brighten up your dreams. Get the hips to La Casita. Biscuit blind and diamond tufting too. Or get some pillows down in Abbey Blue. She says that dreams don't work unless we do. There's even virtual appointments for you. When you need a upholstery, Abby's can. Or some knee upholstery, Abby's can. When you need a upholstery, Abby's can. Or some knee upholstery, Abby's can. Okay. It also looks like we do costume changes, like, <laughs> it, but we don't. We just are like, I didn't even realize we had like a different outfit on in that one at the microphone. That's funny. All the time. So oh, man. I, I, find, oh, I feel catchy. like it's relevant to mention, oh, I am, I don't know how I became this way from Dallas, Texas, but I'm a diehard 49ers fan and I have been my entire life. So that's why we that's have right. all of, I have all of this 49ers, the San Francisco gear. 
Oh, you stopped talking. I thought you were going to say more. Oh, no. Oh, no, no that's okay. that me, that's yeah. why I have no, all no, the no. gear. <laughs> You've got all the gear. So it was beautiful because whenever we did a bay business, we'd be like, oh, I'd be like, oh, I don't have a 49 shirt. He'd be like, I have four. I'd just go in his closet and get a shirt and be like, oh, cool. That's easy. Yeah. Um, we love I was going to tell, um, yeah, I love that. That's still some people. I mean, that's some people. That's just so good. John, that's good stuff, man. That's good. It's Thanks. so melodic. Like, really beautiful. Abby, so good. For, for, I oh, wonder, Justin. If, sorry, Anne just said something interesting in the chat. Yeah, Stacy. Yeah, not dissimilar. <laughs> yes. You know, I thought it had kind of a '90s, early 2000s kind of feel. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's maybe why it's stuck. Kind of mom has got it going on. I never even thought of that. Yeah, those it's could great. really mash up together. Yeah, they could totally mash up. Because Abby does have it going on. Yeah. Abby's got it going on. She's like, yeah, I love her. Gosh, she's so great. She's great. I forgot about the affordable furniture thing. And I always think about that. Um, I such remember, a cool yeah, passion she said, project. yeah, she said that in her phone call. And I was like, it didn't, now it's like re, you have to hear something kind of more than once to like really hear it, you know? And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Very cool passion project, you know? So I have a yeah. question. I know that when you worked on the City Lights jingle, you asked us for some words and phrases that were important to us. Oh, we love about, doing that jingle, by yeah, the way. About how you how you work with these different business people to kind of get the spirit of what they do into the song. What's what's the process of that? Well, it's we worked on the first one. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say it's very funny because it changes, you know, depending on business. Sometimes the business owner. Like we just find out about somebody and we're inspired by them. And so we, we do our own research and, and, and write something for them. And, and <laughs> once we, we had someone that we wrote something for and he was like, no, I'm, I'm kind of doing a transition right now. No, thank you. And we're like, wait, what do you mean? Yeah. No, thank you. He's like, no, thank you. And so we learned a, a lesson there. Um, but, but yeah, in, in terms of, then uh, sometimes, like you said, with city lights, we do know, we do hear, get to communicate with the business as Justin said about Lee Weimer's we you know we we got lots and lots of specs to kind of to, to tweak and to figure out and to fit in there Justin what were you going to say I was going to say um well first rule of jingle writing is sometimes you know maybe sometimes you don't always ask them sometimes if you do you know that guy he <laughs> you know it all worked out as we know um can I tell the story about that guy a little bit I'm not going to talk about yeah. him but that tune that you just heard we had originally, John had written a tune for someone else and the tune was so good. And then the guy was just like, hey, no, I can't. Thanks. And we were like, what? And we were like, no. And then John, from what I recall, went to the business, took his guitar on his bike in New York City. No, I didn't take the guitar. This, this oh, you didn't take the guitar. Legs. Okay. I, I, thought, you took, I thought you had ways. the guitar. I thought oh, you gosh, had the guitar. John, and their story this way. <laughs> no, yeah. Sorry. I thought you... I thought you played the song for him on the guitar. Is that wrong? No, I played the mix on my phone. Oh, you played the mix. Okay, you played the mix on his phone and the guy was like, whatever. But I was like, wait, what? This guy must be completely... But we were young then. We were a young jingle, young jingle business at that time. So then we were like, this tune is too good. And then like six or seven episodes go by and we're like, Abby's? Abby's. So it was this song that we ended up, it ended up being uh, a really, really thankful, happy accident because John then reworked the lyric of the song we didn't want to lose. We loved it. And then it ended up being so much better than what it was. It was repurposed. Mm -hmm. so it was like full circle because we repurposed it for a repurposer. Yeah. Genius. When you need upholstery, Abby's can. And then Justin added for some neat upholstery, Abby can. I yeah, you you pulled that that end out of your out of yourself. It was nice. The, the, you know, oh, it's, it, every perfect. everything happens as a team. You know, better than the the whole is better than the sum of the parts. That's right. That um. So sorry, I don't know if we answered your question. Um. What I what I should have said was going to say was, yeah, we luckily we will when we have the opportunity when we kind of have a head start. Um. We will ask, you know, like City Lights, we're like, you know, what's important to you guys, you know, when you think about yourselves as a, as a, as an organism, you know, what are you, you know, what sort of comes to mind? So I love to just look at a sheet of like, 
what to sort of try to mention or what to sort of try to highlight. Mm -hmm. Because then it's like, those are the beautiful things that you get stuck on that like, I was like, okay, I remember we were just working. I was like, I gotta get next stage and I gotta get filament. And John and I were sitting there with filament going, <laughs> what's a filament? Okay, it's that light yeah, thing inside we a light Googling bulb. Filament. Which definition of filament do we want to use? What does it evoke for us, like ideal-wise? Like, what are we trying to get at? We did go back and forth on filament for a while. I'm very glad with like how it worked out. Me too. We were looking at filaments in the light bulb, and then I was like, but how many syllables is it? Filament? Okay, what does it do? It shines, but maybe they want to do a filament that's like the space filament. Is it shining filament? And we just kept going. Then all of a sudden we <laughs> landed. For those of you who don't know, filament is the name of City Lights podcast channel. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, no, it's okay. Some people don't know. And the next stage is, well, you're on the next stage right now. So we're on the next stage. Like what that is. All right. Well, so before we get too deep into the City Lights stuff, I want to ask about some of the other businesses that you've written jingles for, because I know there's some in New York, there's some in the Bay Area. You mentioned uh, Cough the Place in Japantown that you love. That's one of them, right? Yeah. Roy Station. That's one. actually a Roy shout out to, yeah, Liam Weimers, I think, gave us a, a lot of, was, was really great for us. But also the first really was Roy Station because Sal Pizarro, I mean, wrote about us. And Roy Station, we knew nothing about them, but we just like spent, you know, some time figuring out how we were going to start. And then John, remember, you found the Wheaties jingle. So we were like, okay, we're going barbershop quartet, but we yes, need to tune for Royce. Yeah, on YouTube, they have a recording of a 1926, I think, Wheaties jingle. It's that's 1926. Awesome. It's wow. the first, it, it, it is commonly referred to as the first jingle uh, in, in the history of jingles. It's the first commercial jingle. It, it essentially saved the, the, the Wheaties brand. Um, in in the Minneapolis region, you can hear about this on the first on the pilot episode, the first episode of the pod. But on the General Mills was looking at their sales after this jingle had ran in, in Minneapolis had run in Minneapolis St. Paul for a couple for a, a year. Why are the sales so much better than here? And it's because these four guys went on the radio every week and sang this jingle, this this barbershop quartet, as the era you know era was nineteen twenty six. And everybody had to have Wheaties. And so it was, it's commonly referred to as the first um, commercial jingle, the Wheaties. Have you tried Wheaties jingle from 1926? And you do a beautiful version of it that's recorded and on your YouTube. I just put a link to your website in the chat. So I definitely oh, thank you checking it out. Thank you. And you've worked with a Harlem cycling studio and a Harlem cycling in Berkeley and all kinds of places. Yeah. So. Harlem cycling. Um, they experienced actually uh, a burglary hmm. and they're a wonderful, uh, she's a wonderful fitness studio in Harlem. Uh, so we As were like, the pandemic wasn't bad enough. Right. Yeah. So we wanted to do something. Uh, John wrote that tune as well. And we were like, we need to do something for them for sure. And she was like, so uh, Tamika is her name. She's wonderful. Um, here in Berkeley, Mossy's Pastries, we did, uh, cause it's so weird. You don't think about it, but like the revenue of like specialty shops like that, uh, comes from like people ordering cakes because they're gathering and celebrating yeah. and that yeah. wasn't happening. So you don't think of, you know, how a business like that would get hit. So luckily, you know, I know people here who were just buying cakes and putting them in the freezer just to like, go get a cake every week, but you know, they're beautiful wedding cakes and beautiful birthday cakes and, you know, celebration and people weren't celebrating together. Um, who else, John, your brother's has a wonderful roofing company, Inspiration. My brother's roofing company, Inspiration Roofing in Texas. Yeah. I mean, most recently our, our, our most recent episode came out. What is today? Thursday came out yesterday featuring Jackie's, Jackie's place, place in, in San, San Jose. Jose. Soul food restaurant in San Jose. Best soul food. Yeah. Hey. Best soul food. In thir yeah, Texan. yeah, best soul food in 30 miles. She's Texan as well. She's a Texan. Now, can businesses commission you? Are you taking jobs right now? We're take we are ready. John, are we ready? Mm -hmm. We feel our model's ready. We're, we're ready. so ready. <laughs> yeah, we're we so ready. It. We love it. As I said, the link to their your their website is in the chat along with the YouTube. So you can watch that afterwards if you know a small business that could use a little boost and need some um, mm -hmm original artistry to promote themselves. How are the businesses using the, the jingles? I know we've put ours on a website, social media and e-blasts and stuff. How do businesses use them? It really varies. Um, it's one of the things that we've been reworking kind of for season two is 
uh, trying to make it as accessible as possible. You know, we, we, in the beginning, were writing these like sort of like longer form story driven love songs, as it were, <laughs> love song jingles to the businesses, um, which are great, but are, are challenging. You know, it's challenging to share anything on Instagram really over 60 seconds. So we've, we've tuned, slimmed down that model a bit. And, um, uh, you know, some businesses will, will, will take the video or take just the, the jingle and, and like, like City Lights did, uh, you know, apply it to, to their own video or their own, you know, imaging and, and, and brand and, and concept. Um, yeah, so it, 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 it varies, but we're, we're continually trying to like change and morph the, the product into something that's like more and more immediately useful, you know. Nice. Well, I think I'm going to share the City Lights jingle, and then we'll open it up to audience Q&A. This video is a little bit different because they gave us the audio for the jingle, and I actually created the video with um, photos and video clips from City Lights. And some of you may have seen it. We've been we've been using it, as I said, on, on we've got it on our YouTube, our website. We've been sending it around. We've got a lot of love for it on our Facebook. And oh, uh, yeah. This is the one where basically all of us cried when we first heard it because we miss our theater so much. So it's mm. definitely, definitely bittersweet. So here is the City Lights jingle. First it's a spark, then it's a fire. At City Lights our flame is meant to inspire. We'll make you think hard. We'll make you feel gay. We still believe a play can light up a city. Lights up on a world of work that's new. The next stage of the arts you'll find here too. Since 1982, we've kept your heart all right. A culture of care. A beacon of light, our vision is strong, whatever the weather, cause you can keep a theater dark forever, CLTC won't lead you astray, so why don't you come down and enter the play? There's a shining filament to light your darkest nights. We'll see you at the play. Down at City Lights. Just I went on mute because I was like, oh, so sweet. I love that. Justin, Justin has this way, one of the gift of every one of these jingles is that Justin is a gifted harmonizer, part, part writer. And you're and very we have sweet. This, that beautiful five part chord at the end is basically just Justin hollering notes at me, either singing them himself or saying, no, this one, no, this one. And I'm just like trying to figure out where we are in the chord and just catch up to his brain, his like jazz chorus brain that he's got um but every one of those songs lee weimers too it's 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 excellent excellent like choral part writing based on this chord and what's going and where this is moving to where and the rules that he's that he that i could only hope to understand in another lifetime uh but that's one of the things that really that i love so much about his writing and that um he fleshes out in the in the like like mixing and 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 producing phase of it while we're in, while we're in the midst of it it's so great John, God. <laughs> okay, you're gonna make him cry. <laughs> okay, okay, it is so great, but what I, what I'm blown away by, and, and I'm an artist like you guys, is there's a feeling to those harmonies. There's, there is, an emotion attached to those intervals. And how do you know that those fit the culture and the personality and the feeling of City Lights? 
Like that's what that's what blows me away about about you guys is that yeah. the the feeling behind the intervals and the harmonies in the Lee Weimer's piece fit Lee and you didn't know him. The mm-hmm. harmonies that you chose, the the tone, the rhythm, the the tempo, the that you chose for City Lights fits City Lights and you don't know us that well. That's what blows me away about you guys. That's that's where I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, there's there's good there's good composition, and then there's this other thing where I feel like somehow you have a gift of tapping into like the heart of. A, a, a business or a person or there's something about how quickly you can connect to the personality or the values or the the importance or the 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 heart of when you're writing these jingles and that's the part that I'm like it's hard to describe but that's where I think that's where I think your 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 gift really is the two of you together that's where i think the genius the genius sits is is (sighs) my goodness really really (laughs) thank you oh my goodness um i remember because we just were talking about this so i remember city lights specifically i remember there were a lot of feelings like having met you right because i met you before i knew rebecca and i didn't know Anne, and i didn't know um rob and so I remember reading the specs and I knew Carol because we'd interacted with Carol uh, working for Lee Weimer's leading up to that um, event. And I just remember like light, light, I'm saying city lights, city lights, city lights. Okay, so city lights, I know San Jose. So I know already what a small theater would feel like in a place like San Jose. Cause I know what a theater feels like in any community that I feel like San Jose is great, but I mean, like, you know, it's, it's growing so much, so much than when I, I, there's so many more people than when I grew up, but so many more, um, just so much more, so many more people are coming here. So I thought like, what does a theater mean to a community like that? I kept thinking of lights, city lights. And then I thought of like the state of downtown and the pandemic. And I thought of beacon of light. And I kept being like, what does light in a dark situation feel like, sound like. So then I was like, you have filaments, which is like a really clear image to me as far as like a light in the dark, city lights. And like the times are kind of dark, but there's still theater, which theater, if you, you know, you think about a contemporary, well, no, you think about a historical use of theater, a historical application, what theater is, right? Is it teaches a community about itself. So when you think about city lights in this dark time when there is no theater, you have to think of that ghost light image of the light staying on, the lights, mu- the light must stay on. Not for the theater itself as an organization, but for everyone's way that it lights. Because in a place like the like San Jose, there is theater, but like we need theater. We need places like city lights. We need that sort of, we need that. We need the culture, we need the creativity. We need the lifting up of writers. We need we need a small theater. And this is what I try to get them about to go on a diatribe, John, get ready to virtually throw a pencil in my eye. But there's something that small theater achieves that large commercial theater just cannot. It's not set up to do it. And then you have the paradox of, well, then it's harder to fund because it's harder to get people in there. So I just kept thinking of that. I was like, light in the dark, light in the dark, light in the dark. And then everyone I met from there and I read the specs about it and I was like, everyone's on the same page as far as like the feeling of like, I guess this emotional visual feeling of like, just that beacon of light. And that's what you guys are. Because how many small theaters are there that are voices for new writers that are creating, you know, voices for queer people that are creating, uh, you know, places for beacons of light, literally in the communities in which, you know, you serve your community. So all I could think of was like, what does it sound like? What does it sound like? It sounds, and then also the arrangement, I have to say the actual arrangement that the vocal sits on, John came up with just finding that setting for the song. And I remember when we found it, I was like, oh, this is it, this is it. It's some sort of like, it's a futuristic thing because 
everything's on hold right now. So it's got to feel futuristic, but it's got to feel warm and the arrangement's got to feel slightly light and high and it's got to feel effortless because it's got to be like, we're going to all be okay. It's going to make everyone feel warm. Theater is gone for now, but we're coming back because you need us. And what we do is, is we serve. I don't know. Does that make sense? I mean, that was a yeah, long one. It totally makes sense, Justin. I just still think there, I, I think it's amazing. Like the 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 song came before the images. Like if anybody from the outside was seeing this, like I, I would want them to know that there was an image of our marquee that said, hang in there, everything's gonna be okay. But yeah. you didn't see that. You yeah. wrote the song <laughs> before. We layered that in after. And yeah. that's what I, it's that kind of thing that I think is amazing. You didn't know that that's who we are. We, yeah. we that was what we put on our me- marquee because we want to be that beacon of light. So there's yeah. just something amazing about you and John knowing that sort of instinctually about us. And that's what you gave us with the jingle. And I'm just yeah. touched by that. And I just think that you're special artists. That's all. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so think, much, Lisa. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think too, like John and I have really soft spots for smaller regional houses. Like we both worked in a lot of them. We both all, we've both done, you know, bigger shows too. We've both done like bigger commercial success shows, but I think like we just have that soft spot for what that experience is. And I keep saying at a time like this, I'm like what the community is missing right now about having their smaller theaters open is something that cannot be provided by any other art form. And so I, maybe that's part of it. John and I met in regional theater. No, you Mm -hmm. know, so I think that's something that's like, we know, we kind of feel like we understand what's bottled up in an organization like that. And I'm glad, I'm so glad that, I'm so glad you feel that way. Like, not because you're like saying we're so talented at all, but I'm glad that it encapsulated what you feel like you guys are and what you feel like you guys do together. And that's really important. That's, that is so great for us. It means more than, you know, being commissioned to do any other, like, you know, hey, barbecue sauce like you know anything being commissioned to do any sort of not that we're you know not that we're like in the big box market you know yet but it's you know what I'm saying that means the world to us yeah I I think to lead to uh uh, Rebecca what you were saying earlier you know like you actually may not realize it but you give us more clues to what we are what we end up creating that you may think i mean the That's first well lyric said. is for, first well it's a spark said. then it's a fire you know it's light like building and, and, and growing from nothing and then the penultimate line is there's a shining filament to light your darkest night you know so we're centering on the light and th- there's also i mean we we wrote i think a couple of versions of this that we scrapped one other thing I really love about working with Justin is that when we both do this, we both really have a strong bull, whatever, meter, you know, they say, um, bullshit meter. You said you can bleep it out later. And bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, bleep it out. Um, so like when something isn't working, we're, we really just scrap it and go back to the drawing board. We were working on it with piano and it just wasn't right. And I think we needed to find something higher. And literally my, we needed to find something ethereal. If we're talking about light, we're talking about filament, the stars, like we needed to find something that didn't feel of this world. And so we started playing around with the MIDI sounds. And that's where that kind of like, you know, thing that you can't create with a piano or a guitar, which are my main like instruments to write on um came from and also you know it's it's technically speaking it's it's sparse right there's not a bass guitar there's not a string section the accompaniment is very thin um which to me like evokes that sort of darkness uh, over present darkness that we were going for so that the light comes through also the vocal line you know is is intentionally it's a very high key um, and Justin is much more comfortable in that range than I am, as you can probably hear in our two different speaking voices. He tends to sit like a perfect fourth or maybe perfect fifth comfortably. Like, like, what do you, what do you do. mean, John? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, all of that, all of that is intentional and, and helps to, uh, to really bring out the clues that you guys sent to us, you know? So uh, again, going back to that, like the, the, the ideas, the, the things that you wanted to evoke, um, 
that that that's how we were able to to get to it because because you guys told us who, who you were and i think that speaks to your um clarity of vision and intention with with what it is that you guys are trying to provide to your community and so i mean our our ability to pick up on that is only an extent of your mindfulness about your own um product and offering i think thank you <laughs> that's lovely also i just wanted to say like the it's a very melancholy song um I don't like it, bring, but it brings up really good memories that I have of being in the theater. Um, and just, you know, listening to it, I have those feelings, but then I saw the video and then that was just, that's the end of it. So, but it just, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got like the tone and it's, you know, very light, I think. And that's, that's what it reminds me of, but I really, I enjoy it. I really love listening to it. Thank you. Thanks, Miranda. Thank you. Do other people have questions or things they want to say? Feel free to, I know we have a bunch of people here with their cameras off and that's fine. If you want to type questions or comments into the chat or uh, jump on and- Ooh, What's going on in the chat? Well, people are saying nice things about you. <laughs> Lots of applause. <laughs> oh, love that. So are you two, well, actually it's kind of silly to say, are you still working actors right now? Because uh, you know, working theater. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a working theater yeah. actor right now? Yeah. I mean, but, uh, in, in normal times, are you still working theater actors? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. So um, it's bizarre. Know. Yeah. It's bizarre time. It's like, hey, we, we, you know, putting things on tape, I'm like what? Can't. This is a three-dimensional instrument. Can't tape this. You know what I mean? You're like in feeling Justin's like that. Case, it's a four-dimensional <laughs> instrument in his case. You're anyway, but it's like, you know, you're like, how are you going to, I want to, how can you self-tape an audition for this live piece? Like, it's just the weirdest, you know, we're, yeah, we're yeah. theater people are, we're three-dimensional people, you know, no disrespect, camera, I love doing camera work. It's great. It's just like, Theater is so uh, muscular. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's hard to do. And it's like a league of their own, right? If baseball, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, the hard is what makes it great, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah. I think we all just got a lot of stored energy too, right now. Theater actors, we're just ready to like get out. But yeah. John. John, yeah, you know, you've been taping auditions, theater. John. Yeah. No, it's yeah, just, John, I mean, you've I, been taping auditions too. Not as, I mean, you know, every so often when they come along here, here and there, um, I don't know. I kind of tend to like to focus on what's in front of me. Like at, at what point, at what point theater or film TV is actually in front of me or actually present again, then I will focus on it again. But for now, I don't know. I'm thinking about I think about myself as a jingle writer and a podcaster and 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 those are my creative pursuits because those are what are available to me. You know, those are my that's offers. a great those yeah opportunities at the moment. That's a well said. And you can't, you know, do something half, you know, you can't be like just kind of have your heart holding out for, you know, everything will come back and it will be, but um I'd be lying too if I didn't say that, like, you know, I had other avenues creatively to explore. The pandemic really gave me, you know, uh, an opportunity to do that. And now it's just like there's so many, there's another gear I found, uh, you know, as like a resilient creative person that I would not trade for anything. I would not trade. I think it's like, yeah, totally what's in front, you know, and I have to take these creative pieces of myself into whatever shows itself as, as a performer, this stuff has all got to come now, you know, and whatever that means, it's, you know, going to be all of it. So. Well, part of the reason I ask is, is because selfishly, I'd love to see you guys on a stage. <laughs> we merrily roll along. I think a merrily roll love that along too. production, uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed on your Instagram too, you had a couple of theater theater production photos, and I was like, "Oh, I would have liked to have seen that show. You guys look awesome." Yeah, the lame is the lame is photos are, are up there somewhere. The lame um, ones are pretty great. This is great. Anybody else have any questions or comments for our wonderful guests? Um, so you do mostly do musicals, or do you do straight plays as well? Uh, the the two of you, John. What do you prefer? I, I guess maybe the word. Yeah. 
I would love to do, as most musical theater actors would say, it's kind of a, a rote question at this point, a rote answer, I think. Uh, you know, I'd love to do more straight plays, more straight theater. I think especially in a market like New York, you get niched into the thing that you are kind of best at, you know? Um, I, I worked in Dallas for a number of years before I moved to New York, as opposed to moving right out of college. And I found that there was just a lot more opportunity to, to you know, explore and do different kinds of, of roles, types of things in Dallas, but in, in, uh, in New York, I, th I feel like, I don't know, Justin, do you agree? I feel like you kind of get niched into a certain thing and, and being a, like a classically trained musician and, and singer, like that sort of has always just been my bag. So I do, and especially out of New York, do almost exclusively musicals at this point. Yeah, I had to fight because I'm really interested in the muscularity. Um, like the Guthrie is a classics house, you know, so I worked there twice. Um, and done musicals there, but there, uh, one of them I did was more along the lines of a play, but then, you know, I just fought to try to have like my artistic footprint be more varied. So I did start doing more straight plays because there's a lot of musical theater that lends itself, especially to classics work, you know, to the more muscular Shakespeare, Moliere. So I really fought to get in for those types of things. So I did do, uh, I did a great, I did a great production of um, Tartuffe, with uh, Reson uh, with um, at the University of Delaware that Mariah Aiken directed, and that was great. And then I ended up doing a production of Our Town. So now, like, I've kind of, yeah, I'm kind of able to. If I see a play that I think I can, you know, have an opinion about when I audition for it, I'm really all in for trying to get in and like feeling. Yeah, I've kind of crossed over to being able to do that, but I did have to fight in the line with what John says because I came from you know musical theater, and so. But you have to sort of get them to be like, no, no, no. Musical theater actors, we have a we have a sensibility that's just as useful. You know, we have an endurance and we have a an understanding of our bodies and our physicality that's you know relevant and great. You know, and so I I had to fight to do it, and it's really been a rewarding sort of transition to sort of vary my resume in that way. But yes, you know, the, I mean, the niching thing is very real. Even like even within the musical theater genre itself, like. I've swung the past two shows that I've been in and I, and, and there's similarly to musical theater, like even within the genre, people see you're like swinging on your resume and, and, and they think, Oh great. He's a swing, you know, and they'll, they'll look at you in a different way. They'll, they'll consider you for different, different kinds of things. Um, this is, it's just something to keep in mind. And you do have to like sort of fight. If there's any like, young actors out there or watching or whatever, um, you know, you can, you, you, you do sort of have to maybe, pivot yourself intentionally in the direction you you want to focus on sometimes. That makes sense. That makes sense. Very interesting. Very interesting. Can you still see me? I'm trying to answer the chat because I love it. <laughs> yeah, we had a nice comment from Elaine and Ken. They had to go, but they really enjoyed it. And I, I watched oh. the gallery view. They were very much, they were very intent and focused. <laughs> Gallery oh, view. I forgot about gallery view. Oh, hey, friends. Sorry, what did you say, John? I said, oh, gallery view. Hi, hello, hello, friends. Gallery view. I always watch a gallery view. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I see you all. <laughs> hey, you guys, this was really great. Uh, I echo everything that Lisa said about the city lights jingle. And it's funny, I keep calling it a theme song rather than a jingle because it just feels a little bit grander. But as I said in the beginning, the jingle is a wonderful art form, so that's okay. Thank you for working with us. Just beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. We're so happy so to be much. here. And John, yeah, you took a you. deep breath like you were going to say something important and then I talked over you. What were you going to say? <laughs> oh, you caught me. Um, well, since you pointed it out, uh, what I was going to say was I think all of our, as you say, theme songs or, you know, love songs or, or what have you, you know, they all have the fundamental like jingle element to them. You know, they, um, they all have that that tagline or that ending. I think that that, that brings them home. Um, I think that was what I was going to say, broadly speaking. Yeah. <laughs> but we're glad you we're glad you love it so much. We're and we yeah, were thank honored you to get so to, much to get for to having be us. Yeah. And and to to be a part of y'all's y'all's future and the reopening and and you know as 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 the world comes back as we all get vaccinated again, you know, like and see 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 what's next out of this this thawing out period whatever the new normal is we're uh, we're honored to be a, a small part of that journey yeah thank you so much for having us tonight too thank you for being part of the show oh well, we really appreciate yeah. it
We will be back next week on Facebook instead of Zoom. We have two really wonderful musicians, Nahal and Austin. And they are, they call themselves a love duo. They're a real life couple and they travel and sing and they do a, a real mix of interesting music and they will be on City Lights Facebook. So check them out next week. Until then, everybody have a great rest of your evening. Stay safe. Be a beacon of light in your world. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.